In this video, Steven shares his journey of how he decided to quit using Aircrete and why we don't recommend it to anyone. But first, let's give away cash, prizes, or discounts. Like the video and leave a comment to enter the next drawing. Winners are announced at the end of each video. Subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when you win. Now let's dive in to today's topic. When I started experimenting with this, I started with Aircrete, and I thought that was a really neat material that you could take Portland cement and add foam to it and get a really nice insulated material. So I had to make uh, a foam generator, and I've made maybe four different ones. This is the latest one, the last one that I did, and this one runs entirely on air. So it has a diaphragm pump to pump the fluid, and then you've got compressed air. So you have compressed air powering the diaphragm pump as well as blasting air through your nozzle here. So you're mixing air and the fluid through here. You've got all your stainless steel scrubbies in here and you end up with foam coming out. I've got magnets strapped here. So I put this right up against my mixer. This is coming over the top dumps it right into the mixer so I don't have to hold the thing. And then it's got regulators that I can regulate the airflow and pressure for the different sides of this for the air pressure going in as well as the flow of your fluid. And then you have a bucket of the fluid that you mix up here so you don't have to have a sealed unit. The previous one I did to this, I took an air tank, and so that was the fluid tank, and you essentially pressurize the fluid tank, and it pumps the fluid then through there. But the problem with that is you've got to pressurize the tank, and so you've got to open and close, whereas here you can have an open container with all of your mix, Drexel foam, whatever you're using for this. So when I was experimenting with that, sometimes I'd, I'd come up with some wonderful mixes, does, didn't collapse at all, and I thought, man, I've got it. And then I started experimenting, and I, then the thing would just collapse on me. And all the air would go out of it and would just sink, and you'd have a mess. And I couldn't be consistent with it, and it was so finicky in getting the pH right and the balance of the weight of the fluid in the mix that was discouraging to me to actually use air creep. And then I saw some YouTube videos in Ukraine and in India where they were mixing shredded styrofoam with the mix. And I thought, man, that's what I wanted. I wanted a mix anyway that had a zero slump that I could actually pack into an open wall for insulation. And I thought I could do that with air creep, but you cannot. It is very liquidy. You have to have a sealed mold or it runs everywhere. But then I said, okay, we're gonna start messing with the styrocrete and see what happens. And that was the ticket. And I started mixing with the styrofoam and it ends up making it way lighter than aircrete, far more insulative, at least 50% better insulation, and uses far less Portland cement. So it ends up being cheaper. And so you're using all this recycled material. And so essentially what you're doing is you have all the shredded styrofoam in the mix. And so you're actually packing it out. And I really didn't think that I could get a mix as light as I was getting with Aircrete. But I said, all right, let me experiment. And sure enough, I was able to get a slurry. You have to add a little more water to your Portland mix than you would normally do because the styrofoam is pulling all the moisture out when you add to that. And I was able to glue the pieces together with just as much Portland as I was doing before. So that was really exciting because this thing is a royal pain. This is your weak link in the whole thing. And invariably my machine would break down and I would be right in the middle of mixing and my foam generator would die. When you use the little electric pump versions of it, it's got a little diaphragm on the thing and Drexel foam likes to gum that up if you don't get it nice and clean every single time. You do not want to leave any Drexel foam in there to dry 
it turns into a jelly and gums up the diaphragm and then you got to take the whole head out take it all loose clean it put it all back together again you know all the while you've got a wet mix load in your mixer waiting for the foam and uh, it's not fun or it'll start slowing down on you because it's getting clogged and so now you're waiting and waiting and waiting and it's taking you 15 minutes to do a load instead of you know four four or five minutes so once i got rid of the air crete that was a game changer then i started to experimenting adding sand instead of some of the portland cement because ultimately how much strength do you need portland cement is very very rarely used pure i mean when we do stucco or we do concrete or whatever it just takes a little bit of portland cement and lots of filler of sand and rock to do your concrete and so the portland cement can go a long ways and the sand and gravel is really cheap so i started to mix it with sand and you just need enough binder mix in here to coat all your beads so adding the sand in there is really cheap and i was able to cut the portland down even more in the mix so that's how i ended up with the portland and sand mix in this now sand is about as heavy as portland cement so your mix is still the same weight what i'm finding is the more portland and sand you put into the mix the stronger it is but the less insulative it is and so if we're trying to get maximum insulation value then if we don't need a lot of strength out of what we're doing then we can go really light on the portland cement and sand but if we are under slab where it is going to support a floor or we're needing a patching material to patch in there and we need it to stay, that's when you need more Portland and more sand. So that has been the evolution as I've been working with this over the past three years. And we've come a long ways in experimenting a lot of different methods that you can build with this and uh, i can guarantee you we're not done and we will continue to find better and easier ways to build with and we will continue to keep sharing these with you so i really appreciate your interest in these youtube videos and this online course and i wish you all the best with your project and i wish you success and you can email us with questions and we can talk through your particular project and determine the best solution for your application. So thank you all for your support. It's time to find out if you're the winner in today's giveaway. A randomly selected comment was chosen from our last video and today's winner is... Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Also, hit the bell icon so you're notified of our next video where we'll draw a new winner from the comments on this video. Share our channel with friends and family to expand the Abundance Army. While you're waiting for our next video to drop, check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching.